Hey, hello, and welcome to the second month of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> this is your 164th episode of No Low Time. My name sure. is Ovid Velez, and with me, it's the most interesting man in the world, Julian. One of those statements is true. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of these things is not real. Just look for the one. It could right. be that Joel's not the not really the most interesting man in the world. It could be. Could be that. <laughs> it could be that it's not the the second month of this year. Although it does feel like it, but it's okay. Oh man, that's okay. It's okay. Joel, we're back, sir. We're back. Happy man. New Year, man. Happy New Year. Good to be with you. Good to be with all of our followers here on No Load Time, man. Uh, Happy New Year, 2021. We made it. We're alive. We made survived it. Survived through the 2020. Yeah. Uh, we got more ahead of us, but uh, we're back with more content. Got cyber, cyberpunk, cyberpunk 2021 here. Yes. Going, sir. Let's see, let's see how that is. Let's see if uh, oh, we will get adult life. children or, or things like that. Uh, how you doing, man? Adult <laughs> children. Is that, was that a Caillou reference? No, uh, no, we were just talking about it. I'm oh, sorry. That thing, I the thing got canceled, and I'm happy. My daughter never, never got into it. Uh, I, thankfully, she has always been more into uh, more educational uh, sort of things. Uh, Are like, you saying Caillou's not educational? No, no. I mean, my daughter's still socially awkward, but it's, it's because of... Who is it? Yeah, it's because she's a kid. But you know, she'll get there. But she's more she's more interested in uh carbon dioxide and all that stuff. It's nuts. It's we it's weird. Like I was having a conversation with her the other day about stuff and she was like, Oh, this is like about oh, it was like periodic table stuff. I don't know I don't even know how the conversation came about. And and she was t- talking to me about carbon dioxide and I was like, Dude, when I was six I don't know what's going on, dude. It's nuts. So, uh, so I'm proud of you. You're, you're doing all right. <laughs> but yeah, man, what's up? No, man, I'm I'm doing doing great. I mean, had a nice refreshing New Year's, uh, I, I, refreshing and busy at the same time. Like there was a lot of lot of stuff going on, and and I don't mean that necessarily in a negative way. Just taking care of business is usually you get into a new year and you like to start off with a, you know a getting as much going as you can momentum in it so you know work around the house whatever that is but uh you know i did get to have some time to jump back into some more ps5 some switch you know uh on the ps5 front was playing worse ask me valhalla finally got into doing more of the raids um you know i really the only raids i actually participated in originally were just the ones that I had to do with the campaign um like there's forced raids that you have to do in order to continue uh, with the story but I was like, look, it's an open world game. It's one of my favorite franchises. Got to get around and actually just do some side stuff and not just blast through the story. Because as much as, yes, I want to get to God of War, I'm, I'm a completionist. I do like to enjoy as much as I can of the story in the world I'm in before just jumping. I'm, I've never been that kind of guy, Obed. I think you're similar to me in the, in the same way. Like I like to like finish one game and then move on to my next one. I don't like to just, like have dual games playing at the same time. I've done it before. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I try not to do it uh, if, if I don't have to. And there's a lot of stuff coming for, coming out this year. You know, uh, you know, there's plenty of games. God of War, Ragnarok supposed to be coming, so I got to finish this last one. Um, you know, their PS Plus, they gave us, the, you know, the, the Tomb Raider, uh, you know, earlier um, last year. Yep. I'm only saying last year, you're only seven days into the year. But last year, we, they gave us... They gave us Tomb Raider. I want to play that before I play the the newer Tomb Raider that they gave like, us. It came out this week. It just came out this week. I'm like, yeah. I haven't played the first one yet. I know. So I want to play both of them. That was pretty good, though. Yeah, that was that, good. those are solid, solid games. And I think for the, I think I bought the first one. I bought the definitive edition on PS4, okay. and it was like four dollars on on one of those crazy sales. It's like, dude, four bucks. I'll grab it. Yeah. And and I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So I'm actually looking forward to this too. See, like, I'm kind of at that place with Horizon, right? Like, I'm like, do I buy it because it's like ten bucks right now, or is that going to be a PS Plus game next month? And I'm going to be like, I spent ten bucks. But it has the DLC though. It has the DLC, and the I mean, you're you're still going to spend five bucks on the DLC. It's worth it because it's that area. It looks phenomenal. So, Horizon is a really good game, man. Like, I'm going to play it regardless, right? It's just one of those things that uh, I'm. Definitely buy Anthony Nelson. It's just the one to do it. You know, you're thinking like, about it now. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's a good game, man. 
It's probably yeah, sure. it's in my opinion, right? And I and I and you know that I love Ghost of Shima. Um, in my opinion, it is it is it's probably the best open world game I've ever played. Uh, so so you know there there's that. Um, and Ghost is phenomenal and beautiful, uh, but it's just that Horizon is it just. I haven't played it in a long time, but it's just that it's so good, man. It's so good, and uh, challenging, and yeah, it's, it's over overall. It's it's fantastic. So yeah, yeah. Those are the games that constantly come up, like in a discussion of uh, utilizing the backwards compatibility on PS5 to have that you know really pure experience. I hear a lot of people talk about God of War, Horizon, and Ghost of Tsushima. Like those are the games that like you just gotta play again or if you haven't played it all you gotta do it so i'm in the boat if i haven't played them yet so i need to do it yep. um aside from that yeah i got a little bit of time playing playing some more on the switch um my sister got uh animal crossing so i've been uh checking some of that out it's really good really nice good. nice um i could see cool. why that would be something that i recommend for a lot of people when you know it's been an interesting time that we've had in in our in our world yeah. in our country and everywhere like that's something that uh, would help a lot of people. Uh, I'm not saying not to go to specialists or anything. I'm glad for their help, but that's something that at home you can definitely just enjoy and and, and chill out and make you happy. So yeah, but yeah. Cool. But aside from that, man, I'm I'm good. What, what you been up to? Nice. Uh, watched a couple of things. Um, finally got around to watching uh, Chisham. Oh, I forgot you hadn't seen that. Nope. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot, actually. Um. Man, what's the name of the actor that plays the villain? Oh, this uh, is the. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forget his name because he's on a British lot guy. of things. Yeah, yeah. He was on. He was on a Kingsman, right? Yes. Because I'm fact checking this right now. Because I, I, come on, I gotta know this. <laughs> forget it. Forgot the name of the actor. Anywho, well, while you while you check that, um. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Mark Strong. Mark Strong. So, so Hollywood. I think. Listen, listen, listen to, to what uh, old Obed has to say. If you can't find an actor for some reason to play a role, right? I think Mark Strong's a dependable guy because every role he's in, he just freaking nails it. He's like Stanley Tucci. He's like they even look like alike, but. It's like you put him on something, he has gotta come through. Like Stanley Tucci's on those on the, the those crappy Transformers movies on the last two. And and bro, he takes that script that he's got. It's a crap script and he works. actually makes it work. Yeah, he works it. So so um yeah, you want a dependable like seri- like a, a you're looking for a guy to play a serious role or a villain role? Mark Strong, go go for it. Uh, Mark Strong is the same dude. Not to interrupt you, but Mark Strong was the same dude that also was in uh, Green Lantern, the Ryan Reynolds movie. He was also playing Sinestro, and yes. it's one of those things that, like, as much as I don't like those, those that movie, like he did do a pretty decent job as Sinestro. I can't lie. Like, yeah, yeah, it was fine. He's like again, he's good at everything. All right, going back to to Shazam, uh, very good because I I went in spoiler free with the exception of what we talked right. Uh, and, and I think the uh, the most surprising part was, uh, and now we're going to go into spoilers, so it's just him, of course. It's been a couple years. Uh, it's been about a year and a half, right? Yeah. Well, almost, yeah. Um, uh, I didn't see I didn't see the, the part where he actually shared the power with uh, his, uh, uh, I guess, Ted brothers and sisters, if you want to call them that. Um, that was pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I really liked it, man. I mean, overall, like, I, I can't really say, you know, and, and point to a scene. I was like, oh, yeah, this was awesome. Because the action was average uh, overall in uh, yeah. throughout the entire movie. Uh, but the movie had heart. And that, and that to me, made it. Like, I, I can't say it was like, bro, this scene in Shazam was like, oh, pff, like oh, great, right? Well, I, I can't tell that. I can't say that. But. I think the movie is very consistent, and it has a lot of heart. Uh, it's very charming, and uh, I liked it. I liked it, man. And credit scenes are pretty cool too. Yes. So I have to go back 
because I am I was not familiar with that character with the uh, the uh, was it the the I was gonna say the woke worm, but it's not. It's, <laughs> although that should be that should be like a YouTube channel, like the woke worm. The woke worm. <laughs> no, that's uh, Mr. Mind. Mr. Mind. There we go. Yep. That was awesome. I thought. Like, yeah. I, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That, that was that was cool. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I got I gotta say, man, I think like the the best parts of the movie was, was like a, a, anything where where, uh, where the villain was in was great. Like it, it was he shoot scenery. It was great. It was great. I really again, I really really enjoyed it. Uh, Mark Strong in this movie. Uh, yeah, overall, I, I recommend it. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not as good as like man of steel right i like like man of steel has a like a special place in my heart for some reason it's weird same i'm with you um, it's I, severely I, underrated. I really like that movie but uh but uh, but i think it's it's one of the better uh dc offerings and definitely definitely the more lighthearted of all of them um <clears throat> i watched cobra cry cobra kai season three cobra kai cobra cry cobra cry karate cry um <laughs> You saw my post, right? I did. But yeah, that, that was my old bed, guys. That was a good one. So clever, very clever, bro. How? How? Uh, okay, and and uh, again, disclaimer. And I've uh, I think I've said it before on the podcast. The, the the original Karate Kid movie is is one of my favorite movies of all time. Top ten for sure. I got the Blu-ray. It's I like it. It's 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 it was a movie that I really love, right? How is this the freaking Karate Kid giving me what I wanted from Star Wars? How is that even possible, dude? You get your cast right. So this is hear me out, Joel. Hear me out. Force Awakens. The first thing we ever saw about Force Awakens was that picture. Where everyone was sitting around with the script. And it was magical. It was magical. You saw that picture. It's like, it's magical, right? But they never gave us the magic. They never gave us that. Cobra Kai is giving us that. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of the Karate Kid. Because they... They, they, they said... You know, Sony, Will Smith, you know, Ralph Macchio, they're, they're producers in the show. They, they, they said that they basically came together and said, we have this people that we can pull into the show. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's not wait because we don't know what's going to happen. Let's get everyone together. And they did it. And I love it. And it, it was fantastic so freaking good man it's good yeah I, I will admit from what i have watched I'm, I'm still on season two of the show okay but uh well i will admit from what i what i've seen of it so far it's like they're not afraid to to play into the fans hands like you they're they're giving the fans yep. what they want kind yep. of thing like it's not the kind of show where they're trying to pull in new people I'm not saying that there isn't new fans and they wrong and that's and that's the just, crazy part because right. they are because they're they have the stuff for the fans and but they have the teen drama for new for younger generations right no and and that, and that's the thing right so like netflix came in and they basically saved this show because it was on google whatever first right or YouTube, youtube red yeah YouTube red yeah and no one had it YouTube just red. had right just had to do with where it was that the exposure oh. just wasn't good but netflix saw that they have a bigger platform bigger exposure easier access and then you start getting you know certain fan base bring it around trying to get then pass on to the next i mean it's just it's just a very smart move from them um overall i give netflix a lot of credit for um keeping a lot of the uh keeping keeping all the original people intact keeping the originality of the karate kid it's funny dude i watch it i don't know if you feel this way but like 
it's like it's set in a modern time period, but it feels like it's in the 80s. Like it doesn't like it's weird at the same like well, how they do it. But I think that's just the point of like trying to appeal to absolutely different audiences at the same time. They like nail it, man. Right. Like I'm watching season two and I'm like, it just so happens that like, you know, they're at the skate rink and it's 80s night. Like when they're in there, like they they, they play into that. Very yeah. Well. And they're um, not they're not afraid, dude. Yeah. They're, like they they're not afraid of very much. They are not afraid of of, you know. Like this is, I it's, come on, man. Like it, it's it's, like like it's it's awesome that I'm that I'm get that that I'm watching this right. I um, I think it's absolutely awesome. Like we we can't get this with anything else right now. Uh, that I love. Like we can't get this with Ghostbusters because Hal Ray must pass away. We can't get this with uh Back to the Future because uh you know uh, uh michael j fox is sick and uh doc is like a billion years old uh it's it is what it is right um and star wars we we got that glimmer of hope with that picture and 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 they didn't give it to us but then out of nowhere, bro. It's like, how, like I saw it. I was like, "This is the silliest thing. How is the? This is not even gonna be good, bro." And I was like, "How is this? This doesn't deserve to be this good." <laughs> so season three, season three by far is the best. Like it's the best. Like it, it's, bro. And they, they they have, and then they have continuity, and it's everything's well written and, bro. And it's exactly what you said. When you get the 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 Larusso Johnny Lawrence thing, it feels like the '80s. But then you get the kids, and it feels modern. It's in the the way they bridge it. It's just phenomenal, man. It's like how is this even, dude? I'm in love with this show. It's stupid. I love. I absolutely love it. It's it's probably my favorite show right now. Like wow. I, like like after Mando, right? After Mando. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, because uh, it's it's nuts, man, and and this is what I wanted from Star Wars. I wanted, you know, L- L- Luke Leia and Han uh, and Chewie on the Falcon going on, uh, and and R two D two and three C three PO. Here we go again. <laughs> it's like, and I got a bad feeling about this. And that's what I wanted. I don't know. I don't like that's something that really does like it does get me. Like I don't know who said no. Well, you know who, we Joe. Cannot... You know who. I don't get it, man. You know who? It, I just don't. Get mm, it, man. I get so, I get angry thinking about it, but at least there's one property that had the nuts to give it to me. It's like, and and it, it's great that it's one of my favorite things, right? And and you know, it's it's one of my top tens, and and I love it. Like like for some people, The Expendables was this, right? I was like, wouldn't it be great to get all these like old actors from the '80s and get them on the movie? And it's like, and the, and, and did and you I, watch those? I, the first two and they're fine they're not like mind blowing but but what you get with with Cobra you get so much charm and it's funny and it's well written and and the and the and the fighting sequences are ridiculous as they should it's great man I love it it's a great show so so I'm really excited for the future of that show uh, now that they got Netflix money and everyone's, everyone's like getting right. paid now right it's like this thing blew up like yeah, this I thing mean, once once you get a season four like that's what it, it was green lit while before season three even came out yeah that's when you know that like netflix is for real because usually after the three seasons that like netflix kills shows yeah so that's a good sign yeah because they just kill sabrina i know my, my wife is watching uh sabrina yeah. and uh and, and that that this season is the last uh, Witcher got delayed, right? Because Witcher was supposed to come out now or about the end of the month. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and I, I heard Henry Cavill got hurt. He hurt his back or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I, I, I get a strong sense it's gonna be, and I, I know that many people disagree with me on this. Some people do, some people don't. I don't think the first season was great. I thought it was, it was fine. I, I, I thought the first, the last two I had episodes. A lot of issues, man. 
Like, I thought the last was, two episodes were good, but the, I know that they yeah. said like there was a lot of things they were adjusting. And I was I watching the show. You're like, this is fixable. it's hard. Like, it's hard to follow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can easily like, you know, fix things. Yeah. So I get a strong sense that this next season will be very good. Yeah. And you'll see it in the last two episodes, because that's what I told yeah. you. It's like the last two episodes yeah. are really, really strong. It's just that the way they try to structure the story throughout the 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 first, you know, how many ever episodes, the first yeah. eight episodes or whatever is just really hard to follow and the, just the continuity it, it's it's hard to follow right but yeah. when 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 the story converges when all the three different stories converge when you know Geralt, Siri uh and, and and the witch lady I forgot her name now um so uh when when the when their stories converge uh uh Jennifer so yeah so so when when their story their stories come together that's when it really goes and yeah. and uh and and i really enjoyed it but yeah like it, yeah we'll see we'll see uh one thing real quick not, not much in the gaming side because i've been just whacking at uh Bloodborne here and there and then uh still playing uh zelda uh but joel on my way back from uh, uh the office today i stopped by best buy and and grabbed uh their like best oh, buy cool. official like tv dock for uh and i was like man it's 50 bucks right Oh wow! I don't have to. I don't have to like move anything over to the uh, to the TV that I have in the room now. So I'll just buy this for the room, and you know have two ducks and move the switch around. I agree. That's a great move. And and it works great. I mean, so far so good. Uh, we we tested it today with Smash and and uh, and Mario Kart, and it works good. It's a little funky um, because it doesn't really it. it turn off all the way and i need to i need to probably just figure that out it's probably something that i that i'm doing wrong uh and i just don't want because the the original switch dock uh doesn't like your battery doesn't drain like it doesn't it, it doesn't keep charging your battery like your battery gets to a level and then it stops and then that's it right and just goes into sleep mode um but this one kind of like stay charging i was like i don't want you to stay charging and mess up my, my switch battery um, so I need to figure that out. Um, otherwise, for that's uh, I and I don't want this the the switch to live in the room anyway. This is something that I that I bought to just play the switch on the TV on the TV here in this room, uh, and it works. Like it's, I was looking at a like the official Nintendo one. It's like hundred bucks. It's stupid. I was like, I don't want to buy that. So this one's fifty at Best Buy, and it worked pretty good. I looked at another one. Uh, Skull and Company that uh, uh, people on Reddit were suggesting, but I, I don't know something. It's it's like a it it, it didn't, not that it didn't feel weird because it looked fine, right? And it had a lot of ports, had more ports than this. This only has HDMI and one USB out of, out of the back, uh, so it doesn't have USB C, doesn't have two USBs like the other like the, like the original Switch one has, uh, but it works for what I wanted it, which is basically just bring the TV over here, dock it and play and that's it. So yeah. Thought I should share that's that. That's awesome, dude. Yep. Cool. Uh Joel, not much happening. It's uh it's the new year. Things are still the people are still trying to figure out stuff, right? Uh but uh but it sounds like DC figured out that they uh I uh, they are not bringing Ray Fisher back for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i mean i don't know if this was mutual or if this was because of the whole uh joss whedon drama that uh that surf surfaced last year uh, regarding the reshoots for justice league uh but there's that joe give us more info yeah i mean uh so there there's a lot uh that's going on um in the world of dc right now from a standpoint of pr and, and their upcoming film slate we kind of touched on it uh, in, in past episodes, but uh, from the Ray Fisher standpoint, first and foremost, you know, this was, I want to say last week, word was come, was starting to float around that, uh, you know, he wasn't going to be coming back. And then, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up then putting like some kind of tweet out or something saying that, uh, you know, that, that Walter Hamada is dangerous. Um, that they put a head piece out on him and that, uh, you know, they didn't really in investigate and that he won't participate in any production with Walter Hermada. 
and uh, and he then you know goes on to say that uh, you know he's he won't participate in any he will not participate in any production associated with him. So uh, you know, hearing this kind of news, um, you know, instantly you 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 realize okay that means that you know if, if there if there is life after I know that recent reports are saying there isn't, but if there was for whatever reason to be life after Justice League Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, you know, that Ray Fisher would continue on. Sounds like that's literally impossible so long as Ramad is attached. And then, um, you know, of course, that what was confirmed uh, originally for him to have a cameo in the Flash movie, and then that instantly got cut down also. Uh, this doesn't really... I don't, I don't think this bends a needle much for the future of the cyborg. It just has to do more so with the issue with the actor, which then goes into issues with the, uh, the heads of of DC and so yeah. um I did strong I did believe that um DC did basically doesn't have a choice if this guy's saying I'm not gonna work with you then they have no choice not to have this guy in the movies I mean they they could if they wanted to try and enact some kind of contractual obligation but I don't none of us know what those details are and do they even have grounds on that and and is it that serious probably not um but and it's probably more bad PR for them to actually pull someone who doesn't want to be a part of it right like I mean, Marvel's had that with, you know, this guy who played uh, Hugo Weaving, played Red Skull. Like, that guy did not want to come back at all yeah. to play Red Skull, even though contractually he was supposed to. So uh, they, they were able to work around that, right? That's a little bit easier. I don't know all that. Anyways. Yeah, um, I mean, because you, you really left the character, like, uh, the character's uh, whereabouts ambiguous and what happens to the character. So it's a lot easier to bring back in some form. You can get a sound alike and, and fix it, right? But, I agree. But in this case where, you know, you have a, a character that's, I, I, I guess, half present? <laughs> because, because it's yeah, like half a face, it's right? Yeah, like CG literally, every, literally yeah. in half. Yeah, yeah it's literally. Like half a face. Um, but he's, he's, he's not going to be too hard to recast. Uh, I think, like what you said, I think I think was, was correct. I think we'll see more of the cyborg, just not of Ray Fisher's cyborg. Yeah. yeah, I I do believe that the whole the reasoning behind this does though literally have to do with the whole investigation. I mean, he came out with some very strong accusations uh, against this director and against the production of production, of yeah. the movie. Um, and you know they did do that investigation, and it seems like that investigation, you know, didn't necessarily make it seem to be the way that he maybe have initially initially painted those pictures. So of course that, that, you know, as an actor can make him feel like they didn't stand beside him and just say, Hey, this guy's a victim of X, Y, and Z and we're going to support Instead, they investigate. And you know, that probably didn't seem most supportive to him and who knows what else Hermada has said, but I mean, that's where it leads into our next thing here. So, I mean, now this makes more sense when we found out that Hermada allegedly has signed on, to continue as the head of DC Films, uh, the president of DC Films uh, over at Warner, and he's going to be in there till at the minimum 2023. So I'm not sure how that a contract set up, but it's going to be no less than the next, you know, three years here. So I mean, it, it, it's interesting because one might assume that the timing of this has to do with after you know both this story and with what's going on with uh, One Woman 1984. A lot of that is Hermada's thinking. He's he's saying like let's let's set up this this world where we can put movies on streaming and we can put movies in the theaters yeah um you know that's that's a whole warner thing as well but but he's d taking it further to make his his world successful his business line is that he wants to take some of those ips that were in that crazy investor call a couple years ago where it was like and we're gonna make a green lantern this and we're gonna make a this and we're gonna make like this guy un unleashed a ridiculous amount if you guys look up how many titles i my yeah. mind was spinning and then like you know none of those things came to pass but when we got to like the the dc event that they had uh this the fandom event that they had where they started talking about some of the things that they were going to be working on you start to realize that this whole multiverse idea comes back to hermada's original plans and now dc saying we're going to put you know four films out a year uh come 2022 and then two films on hbo max plus uh, television series that are on HBO Max that tie into the movies. He's figuring out a formula that's not just like these other, you know, ha in the, the you know, you get a movie like you know Kong vs Godzilla. It's going to be in the movie theater and going to be at home. Something like this now, kind of where you have a you know a Gotham show you have to watch before you watch 
uh, you know, the Batman with pa- with Robert Pattinson, it yeah. kind of forces you to to really connect deeper into the DC lore, which is a good idea. Let's just hope the storytelling's any good. Um, I, I'm not really confident with the work outside of Zack Snyder's mastermind kind of layout. I know there's been some bumps in the road there, but uh, I'm not saying it can't happen otherwise. I think yeah. Patty Jenkins has proven to be a you know fine director and, and fine visionary, but you know, for the other ones, I, I don't know how they'll go without that real architect to say, this is where I want you to put your characters that leads into a Justice League movie or whatever that is. It's crazy to think that it's so hard for them to get this this stuff easy. Hopefully, it does come together when they start getting this Flash movie coming out and other things, but only time will tell. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. It's, uh, again, <laughs> we'll go back to Cobra Kai. <laughs> It's it's a small miracle, man. It's nuts. Wait till you get to season three. It's great, dude. So I, I will, yeah. Man. Yeah, I mean, this is this is more of the... Th- this seems to be a, a part of the old uh, DC guard uh, that's still left. And uh, uh, part of uh, part of what happened back when... Uh, uh, when, when Whedon uh, was brought in to finish Justice League and then actually not finishing the movie, just creating his own thing. And it's, it's it was a big mess. It was a big mess. Uh, Joel, something that I didn't have on uh, on the uh, on the notes here, but I just remembered, uh, is that uh, that that officially Michael Keaton's going to be Batman in the uh, DCEU. Uh, yeah. And Ben Affleck is, is confirmed, uh, confirmed out. Um, yeah. So he's going to sort of play a mental role, sort of like a Batman Beyond, but with Batgirl, um, right? And that, to me, that that's that's fine. That sounds. And Batgirl sounds good. will end up being more of like the actual Batman of the future Justice League movies, and Keaton will be more like a Nick Fury esque like type if... character mm-hmm. uh, for for those Justice League films. Yeah, it lines up with stuff that I had heard earlier on, so this makes sense. And I like it. I like it. Yeah. I mean, what it's Mike Keaton. He's back as Batman. And it's not, what's not to like. It's, it's um, yeah, it's good. It's like old and new at the same time. You know what I mean? It's refreshing, but also it does it does make you ask the question, like though, with the whole multiverse thing. At some point, like Robert Pattinson exists in his own world, but if they really want to, at some point, there's a little rift in the the world, and uh, you know, Robert Pattinson is meeting Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, who's also meeting with, you know, Henry Cavill's Superman. Yeah. We'll see how they go. Yeah, we'll see. Um, speaking of multiverses, Joe, uh, Marvel Studios' own Kevin Feige is uh, now confirmed that he's working on a Star Wars project. They're saying film project, but um, it was something that was not on the uh, on the list uh, from uh, from a couple weeks ago uh, when. Uh, uh, when when we got all the, uh, the 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 huge Star Wars stump, uh, although we know though the Boba Fett the book of Boba Fett wasn't announced there because you know it was supposed to be uh, a surprise, so uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's, uh, that's pretty good, uh, but it's uh, they are confirming confirming that uh, he has tapped uh, Michael Waldron, who is the writer and the executive producing producer for the upcoming Loki show. To be uh, router, uh, the you know to write the script for uh, for the movie. So, what's it gonna be? We don't know. Is this the Star Wars revival? We don't know. Uh, is he gonna give me a Cobra Kai in the Star Wars universe? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's a Co- Cobra Kai is now the measuring standard for when you bring back an old franchise. Like wow. bring back Star Wars, you gotta measure it with Cobra Kai. <laughs> You're gonna bring back, I don't know, bring back an old, uh, an old franchise. I don't know. I uh, uh, back to the future. Uh, everyone's dead, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you can't do it with Back to the Future, right? Because again, we we'll go back. But if you're bringing back stuff, like, and again, we have not seen. Uh, granted that Cobra Kai is a Sony production, but uh, the. Uh, uh, is it Ghostbusters Resurrection? Is it was it called? I forget the name now. Yeah. yeah. So we have not seen it, right? That movie very well could bridge 
generations and could be fantastic like Cobra Kai because it's Sony, right? Uh, it could potentially be. Um, but but it is like if you're bringing back an old thing that the people feel nostalgic for, Cobra Kai is your uh, your your measuring stick. You gotta measure it to Cobra Kai. Is it is it is it gonna be as good as Cobra Kai? No. Oh, I was thinking of having just some characters here and some characters here and some characters a couple of years from now. No, characters are alive. Bring them in. Let's shoot together. Let's do this. But the the key to understand with Cobra Kai is that it is not a reboot. Like that's the biggest exactly. thing about it. Right? This is a continuation. Exactly. This is an expansion. Expansion. They're trying to. They're they're growing on in it. Like most executives would say. Eh, we'll try this, but we're really looking to do more of a reboot thing. Um, they fully have committed to, and they did try. In all fairness, I mean, you can't forget the Will, the Mike, the Will Smith son, Jaden Smith, you know, and Jackie Chan Karate Kid film. They tried the reboot thing, exactly, um, and then and failed. See, didn't fit. It didn't work, right? I, mean, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, no, me either. Yeah, and then. Um, you obviously get now Cobra Kai, so that that's usually the way that cookie goes. So I I would I, I think I think as long as you learn your lessons, right? Like if you learn like how these guys did, it can come out just fine. Yeah, like I I think now that Predator is a Disney property, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> and Alien is a Disney property. Why not actually give us a proper uh, Alien versus Predator? And bring like give us Alien vs. Predator from from the Capcom from the Capcom video game. Like Disney. There's a Capcom arcade game called Alien vs. Predator that bring back brings back Dutch, aka Arnold, with a bionic arm. And and uh uh Lin Kurosawa, you know, a a a, a, a samurai soldier girl, and she's awesome. And two predators, and just go all out against the aliens. That's all we need. We don't need anything else. Alien vs. Predator, Disney, the Capcom game should be your measuring stick for that. Don't don't go nuts with like the the you know Paul Dele Anderson stuff, and you know don't don't do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm here for this. So. Back to your thing though, with Feige though. Yeah. Um, I, I mean like. Just because Feige's done a great job with Marvel, like, does not mean that he would do a great job with Star Wars. I do not know at all. I, I have more faith than I do doubt. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I trust the guy. Um, but like, I mean, they, like people trust Kathleen Kennedy. She did all these incredible works of art from before, and then you see that Star Wars just is not seeming to be a fit that we all thought it would be. So like, I I just want to preface that to say like, let's let's see how Kevin does. I. I'm not saying to have negative expectations or low expectations. I'm just saying, like, let's let's see what is his interpretation. I do think that, though, him being the businessman kind of person, that, uh, like, John is – John Favreau and, and Dave Filoni, these are, like, the, the creative kind of people, right? They understand the business, but they're also just pure creatives. Um, so you see very creative work, and they're – obviously, they're, 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 they're stories – um, where someone like you know Kathleen, you can see where she's trying to you know cash a Disney check, you know with 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 her movies. And I think Feige is also a kind of guy that he also is trying to cash a Disney check. He just I think he has a really good way of of um, trying to to have a good pulse on on everything to kind of find that real fine line. The guy's not afraid to fire directors and and and, and, and actors. But he also tries his best to keep everyone happy. So yeah, uh, I, I will be very curious to see what kind of business tactics he pulls. I won't be surprised right now. He's already thinking, okay, which actors do I want to bring in that are from old movies or whatever? He's the kind of guy who can negotiate something like that. Speaking of that, how do you feel of those rumors? And 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 again, take this with uh, a a piece of rock salt from the Dead Sea. Um, how do you feel about those rumors that uh, that John Favreau may bring uh, RDJ as Thrawn. I'd love that. I'd love that. I, I would prefer a British actor. That's just, I don't know, just a weird, like, thing for me. Sounds imperial. Um, but, like, it's Robert Downey Jr., guys. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. why would I why would I think that'd be a terrible idea? Like, yeah. that's... And, that's... I, and I'm taking it to, you know, it, it, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm not saying it's real. I'm not getting excited because it's it's 
it's too much, right? Yeah. So so I'm not getting too excited about it. I'm just I'm taking it. I'm very being very cautious with what I say because there's no proof of it. Uh, it's just you know YouTube videos from channels that sometimes are right, sometimes are wrong, and you know stuff. Be careful out there. with those conspiracy theories, Obed. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 I, I'll I'll watch YouTube them. YouTube conspiracy but, theories. Yeah. No. Nah, they're out there. Um. Greetings. Star, my Star Wars conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Uh. It, it, but it's uh, I can see it, right? Um. And he has, cause, cause he has this delivery that that could definitely work for Thrawn, especially you know, you know, an older Thrawn. Um, uh, I mean, not much older, but you know, six, ten years it's been after. A while, dude, yeah. I mean, it's probably gonna be like six, ten years after we last saw him. Um, so we'll see. Speaking of, uh, because you you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, the the. The writer that's going to be working on this movie, uh, he he all he wrote Multiverse of, Bad- of Madness mm-hmm. as well. I got I got a Star Wars theory, Joe. Uh oh, I got a Star Wars. I've been thinking about it for like for like three weeks now. <laughs> okay. So so you know how how we we feel, you know, uh, not not necessarily me, but I would say the Star Wars fandom as a whole. How we feel about the, the sequel trilogy? I uh, mean, personally, I enjoy them. Y- yes, yeah, absolutely, yes. They could have been better. We just talked about it at the beginning of the show. We, we talking measuring Star Wars with Cobra Kai, right? It's again, it's like it, it has become the standard. We admit the flaws. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we still enjoy the movies. It's, it's you know, it is what it is. It's still you know, uh, we still enjoy it. I- I'm thinking, Joe. That this is probably what's gonna happen, right? You you got right now, in my opinion, you got two very defined timelines in Star Wars that actually diverge from each other. Um, in Rebels, and and it goes all goes back to to Rebels. Like it's it. It kind of like seemed like Dave Filoni did this on purpose, and we talked about it. We talked about it before, but there's, there's to me, and I'm gonna illustrate this as a Stock Brown illustrated the alternate 1985 to Marty. So, so here's the timeline, right? Here's the 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 line that you know it's you know Grand Republic or you know whatever the High Republic. Uh, all the way to like Phantom Menace and Return of the Jedi, and then Episode Nine, right? So you got that timeline that that goes there, uh, because stuff, right? Um, I think, Joel, that that there is a, a, a divergence point in Rebels that goes down to an alternate timeline, and that is the timeline that we're seeing in Mando. Um, the moment that that happened is Ahsoka dying. Ahsoka died in the temple. This line happened. Yeah. Ezra saved Ahsoka, creating an alternate timeline. Yeah. And and Grogu's the key. You know why? Because in canon, ascertained by books, comics, and the movies... Luke's first disciple was Ben Solo. And now it's not. That is true. That is very true. So, hmm. Palpatine's still doing his thing in this timeline because we already saw it. But the outcome is going to be different. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I... It, so how do we get this like confirmed and, and get this pitch going it's to these just people? Because it's dude, me. that's a great that's a great theory. Because because you the, you I see wish, it, man. Like 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 it's confirmed by the books and by canon yeah. that Ben Solo at the end of at the age of ten was Luke's first he disciple. Starts because they have a kid. Exactly, but now. Luke felt this call before Ben was even mm-hmm. in the picture. I mean, he's in the picture. He's four years old by this point. Yeah, he's not thinking of him being trained to that. Exactly. But he's already 
building this thing and going to train Grogu because Grogu reached out in this timeline in the timeline that I that I, the, the original timeline Grogu never reached out and this one he reached out because Ahsoka told him to reach out on the stone on the yeah. stone and reached out it does yeah and that moment when Ezra pulled Ahsoka out of the world between worlds uh, from Bale of the Force that created an alternate timeline that will result in Thrawn and will result in a different outcome with Palpatine and all that. Um, you know, maybe Luke will find out about uh, Snoke before the whole Palpatine thing gets uh, gets done, and and uh, and avoid whatever happens to Ben Solo. Will we see it? I don't know, but you know, only time will tell at this point. It's because like. I would like for them to do the whole like reset some of that. Like I would like to see that happen. I just strongly get the sense with the stuff that's going on with the the storytelling from the High Republic stuff going on right now. I just feel like they're instead of trying to reset stuff, they're just going and creating something completely new now. They're like, okay, we tried well, the Skywalker saga, and now we want to try something new. Well, he, here's but, the that's man, I, I don't know. <clears throat> so so I think that that the the they're going to again. I think overall, dude, I think Kathleen Kennedy's days, days are numbered. Like, I'm not pulling on my zero and saying, she's going to quit tomorrow. <laughs> and she never quits. Right. So, but but there there's there has been a disturbance in the force. As if, as if millions of fans cried out in joy. Uh, and, 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 and that changed something. See, but I think the the only the, this is just me playing devil's advocate. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I I feel like her days are numbered. I hear if I woke up tomorrow and heard the news, I'm like, oh, you seriously? No, I'd be yeah, like, exactly. oh, look, I saw this coming. But like to play devil's advocate for a second, like I I do kind of feel like fans pretend like the Mandalorian isn't her show, and like they're like, oh, just John Favreau and Dave Filoni things. And Kathleen she's still an it. executive like, producer. Guys, she's the one who hired them. She's so, a, yeah. Like she literally is the boss who hired them. Like there's no way around that. She's the she, president. Of the I mean, she didn't hire she Dave. She talks though. about these at no. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like she yeah. she absorbed him from from the past. Uh, exactly. You know, stuff. Yeah. But my point being is like she can use that like as a piece of security. It's like I might have messed up on all this other stuff, but I gave you guys the Mandalorian, which is starting to save things. If you, I think it's I think when you say the days are numbered thing, I agree with you. I feel more so like she probably has. She will like complete. If she has one more stinker. Put it that way. That's and it's it's scary. the High Republic. It's the High Republic because that I, thing's I don't gonna know, man. Uh, that thing's gonna stink, dude. Like uh, it's it, okay. So I, I know, it, and I've seen some some YouTubers like anti Kathleen Kennedy people saying that it's it's horrible and it's. I was like, how can you judge it if you haven't even read it, right? It's <laughs> one. It's one. Yeah. It's, one, it's yeah. one of those things, right? I was like, well, you know, I, I can't judge it because I haven't read it, so I don't know, right? Um, for for you know the the, the signs look good, uh, but but I don't know. Um, that that could be it. <laughs> she gets one more stinker. Well, I I just think that overall, Joe, that uh her contract's are gonna be up and that's and it's not gonna yeah. be renewed no, and that's, that's and it's gonna come to that. Yeah, like like it's gonna like like her contract her her contract's gonna. Uh, she's not gonna quit. They're not gonna fire her. Her contract is gonna expire. It's like yeah. So we have decided not to renew her contract. Yep. and move on you're not entitled to that anyway exactly so yeah so um and i think that that one once that happens this this is going to be like full steam ahead on on this um how is it going to end and how you know i don't i, know, I, don't, I don't know i don't know it will be tomorrow will it be this i don't know dude yeah i don't know i don't i don't know exactly you know the details that's it's my theory that good theory. that that's you know they 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 are there are already clear uh, differences between the timelines. Uh, you know what what happened in Mando happened sort of kinda in uh, in the original timeline where the sequel trilogy happened, but not like that. Inserting Grogu and Grogu, or or you know Grogu may have been with Mando right, or just hanging out with Mando forever, and it's like oh. They found Bo Katan. It's like, oh no, yeah, I don't know any Jedi because all the Jedi I knew are dead, and you know, Ahsoka being one. But now 
with Ahsoka being back, um, it, it's probably all going to get explained. The Ahsoka show, the Ahsoka show is going to bring everything back together. That's going to be it. So we'll got we'll we'll have to wait for that. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, uh, but I've been thinking about this thing for like three weeks, and it's like you're just put in line together. So it's like at this point here, it's like oh, but Ben Solo, oh, but Ben Solo. Like Ben Solo and Grogu are the keys, right? To to see, both. That was one of my that was one of my thoughts. Like, oh, Ben Solo is gonna come Kill through at Grogu. the end and, and help and help Grogu. Like when he was reaching out, it's gonna be like a little kid or something. And he's like, I heard something. Oh, you know, at the top yeah, line. But they didn't do that. Luke no. comes in and grabs the yeah. so and takes him to train takes him. him. So it's completely like you're absolutely right, dude. Man, uh, it's just Good me. Theory. Just me putting pieces together. Uh, I have a life, people. <laughs> it's not i don't i just don't sit around all day and and finagle around with like thinking about star wars i mean i do but yeah it brings uh, you joy you uh, yeah it does it does it, it really it really does bring me joy thinking about star wars even 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 rise of skywalker just thinking about moments oh, yeah. in that movie just i can bring play the joy. movie right now and i'd still have fun with you like we yeah. were talking about like eh, this, that, the other. Uh, yeah i mean it's what it is with that but uh it's what it is it's you know it's I'm happy. I'm happy with, with what we've gotten with Mando. So uh, we'll see. Joe, gaming news. Not much here. Uh, just uh, a couple of interesting things uh, were announced this week. Uh, one, a very important one, is that all models, with the exception of the base slim jet black PS4, in Japan have been discontinued uh, rumor or you know word on the street is that this was done because they need to they need to ramp up PS5 production uh, because they they um, like it's still you know it's the first second week in January and we still can't find PS4s there was PS4s at Best Buy today I tried twice couldn't get one um I went to GameStop. PS5 the GameStop. PS5 is being yeah, sold out again. Yeah, GameStop sold out, or they had a bundle that was like not not necessarily what I was looking for. So, um, so they really really need to get production going on this thing. So, um, they have decided that they'll uh, just go ahead and discontinue those products in Japan to focus on bringing more PS5s out. Um, PS5 numbers in Japan were very soft. Uh, not as soft as Microsoft, of course, but uh, but very soft, very concerning. Um, but it, it just seems to me that uh, Japan overall uh, has definitely moved into a more uh, mobile uh, centric or mobile society overall, and and that's that's part of it uh, because we saw the Vita like outselling the Xbox One for years in Japan um, and the switch over there is doing crazy numbers like crazy numbers dude so I think this is the right move uh, they they should definitely refocus that and uh, bring more PS5s to Japan because I uh, heard stock was very low as well stock's Same, low everywhere man low everywhere dude they got they, they need to print these things out man I mean, I literally, I know, right? I literally like see stuff on Twitter where it's like, "Hey guys, X, you know, PlayStation Five available in France," and it's like gone. You're, like, it doesn't matter where you live, man. It's 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 a struggle. It's a fight to get them. So yeah, yeah. I hopeful that they, I actually think it's a great idea. Like usually, I would say no, give them more time. PS4 was extremely successful, and it, and they didn't have to rush it. But I do think it's the right move for the future of, of the brand. Yeah. So and people people want to buy them. They're not forcing people to buy them. People want this. The demand is there. Yeah. So just do it. And considering that Microsoft did this for the Xbox One X back in like August of last year. Oh, they had to do that, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean they oh, had man. to. <laughs> man, those things didn't sell, bro. Oh boy. Good device though. No, I agree. I agree. But you know, just didn't they're sell. they're they're making good good hardware right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the One X and the Series X are are yeah. definitely phenomenal machines, man. So, um, I, I wonder if I wonder when this is going to affect the U.S. I mean, I haven't seen a PS4 Pro in months. Uh, in, in the wild, uh, I showed you a 
It was it was from Amazon, right? The the, yeah. the screen cap I sent you. It's nuts. It's like uh, six hundred dollars for a for a real standard PS4 one terabyte. It's ridiculous, dude. Come on. Why? Um, that is the more interesting fact that we still haven't gotten a, a price, you know, decrease on PS4s. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I I mentioned to you that I was contemplating of just getting a a, a cheap. Getting a, a quote unquote cheap PS4 for right. the, for the room here, and it's like it's like it's still like full price. It's like I'm not gonna pay for it's what price. like three hundred bucks right now, right? Two ninety nine, yeah, yeah. It's so I'm like ridiculous. if it would have been one ninety nine, that'd be that would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, because one ninety nine, I can make it. I can scrap it. You know, I can you know scrape some money and get it, but but not for three, dude. Come on, yeah, it's not it's, it's not worth it right now. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering how this is going to affect the the Western market, and uh, I guess we'll we'll see. Uh, hopefully, they can ramp up that production, man, because I I really want I really want one now, and kind of it's kind of a bummer that that we still can't get anything. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, uh, Joel, good news from uh, Nintendo and it is that they've actually purchased uh, Next Level Games. Uh, Next Level Games have been partnering with Nintendo since uh, 2005 when they released Super Mario Strikers for the GameCube uh, and then they took love over that game. I heard it's good. I love that game. Yeah. I can't tell you how much time I put on that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I heard people saying it's like, oh, now you can give us another Striker. Yeah. Um, so they did that for the GameCube, and then after that, they uh, they partnered with Nintendo, and they did their Luigi Man- Luigi's Mansion games. Uh, for they did the ports for the 3DS, uh, or the port and the sequel for the 3DS, and then they did the uh, uh, Luigi's Mansion Three for the Switch, uh, which is supposed to be a phenomenal game. So, uh, yeah, they uh, they they went ahead and acquired the studio. This is pretty good i bet i bet the guys at next level are just ecstatic about this because oh yeah uh you know now nintendo has a, a vancouver based studio that can you know really bring out uh some of the stuff um they've also helped with the uh with the punch out uh reboot that came out for the uh for the wii um i, I think it's a it's a wise choice nintendo rarely does this sort of thing uh, they rarely acquire uh, external studios. Uh, uh, in this case, I think that uh, that Next Level Games really demonstrated that uh, the 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 proper reverence and uh, also the quality of the product. Uh, yeah. And what I mean reverence is reverence to the uh, to the Mario IPs and the Nintendo IPs because yeah, uh, you got respect it. Yeah, Nintendo's very zealous with that. It's like it's like the like I like I said, it's like Disney with their characters. When when I mean their characters, like it's like the Mickey. The, yeah, exactly. Like the Fab Six. Um, like that's that's like you cannot you don't mess around with Mickey and Minnie and Donald and, and Goofy. So uh and it's the same thing for Nintendo. And I think that next level um uh, approach the properties with respect. Uh and they again they 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 demonstrated that they had they can pull put quality products out there for Nintendo. It's a no brainer. If you ask me, man, I agree. Uh, not much info on, on that, on how much they paid or, or anything, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty good for, uh, for this guys. Uh, Jolly, one interesting note, not necessarily, uh, you know, news, uh, but, Allegedly, or not allegedly, it's uh, I guess it is recorded that uh, back before the original Xbox, uh, w- when the original Xbox was being in development, uh, and Nintendo they still only had the N sixty four out. Uh, Steve Ballmer went over to uh, to Nintendo <laughs> and offered to buy them, and uh, and he was laughed out of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the conference room by the Nintendo executives. Oh, uh, man. So it's a it's a very interesting story, uh, and this is not the first time that that I've heard uh, that uh, the Microsoft actually got laughed out of uh, meetings in Japan. Um, there's also a story about uh, Shinji Mikami 
when Mikami was working on Resident Evil 4 uh, and Microsoft approached Mikami to for for uh, they they wanted Mikami to make them an, an exclusive Xbox like game or you know Resident Evil or spin-off or something exclusive for the Xbox and they started talking to Mikami Mikami just stood up and left the room and left them talking like this is not this is not the I, first time but, i yeah. wish i was the fly on the wall for this man like i mean it's it's momentous because it's like this is the microsoft's coming to meet with the nintendo this convergence and they're not coming to say like let's play nice like mike one one of them is coming saying we want to buy you like we want to own you like we want to be your masters now and you and you guys will now be a part of our company and it's like <laughs> that's cute nice try i, I mean this kind of makes me think totally not the same but it kind of makes me make remember this we've talked about before the famous Amy pascal kevin feige meeting where <laughs> feige sandwich. Comes in and he's like hey so what do you think about spidey being in the avengers and she threw her sandwich right, right at kevin feige and this was like get out it's only get out <laughs> yeah and i mean it's <laughs> clearly, it's, it's great on, they made a deal but uh yeah. I'm not saying that that deal is going to be made here, but it's just one of those funny, like, hey, sometimes you try, and uh, this is like, it's like that guy who goes around, you're asking everybody to prom, you know? It's like, please, you know, you're trying, man, but uh, yeah, nice try. Yeah, nice try. Uh, but it's a, it's a, is a, you know, a bit of interesting, uh, uh, you know, video game uh, history there. I'm hoping that all this stuff could be on like a season two of High Score. Like all these stories, that would be oh, awesome. Man. Cause High Score had that story about uh, the uh, that marketing manager for Nintendo of America. Yep. That went to Japan when uh, when they were working on Nintendo Power, and she started screaming in the car because they did not get it. It's like you yeah. guys don't get it. Like this, like Americans, they they, they don't like this sort of thing <laughs> that you guys do here. It's it's weird for us. And and they called her the Dragon Lady or something. Yep, was it? Dragon Lady. <laughs> was, yeah. Um, yeah, those were those were fantastic stories. Uh, again, if you if you guys have not watched uh, High Score, highly, oh, highly, highly recommend. It. Highly recommend High Score. It's uh it's so good, so good. Um, but it, I, I thought it was a, a a a cool like little thing to add here uh, to uh, uh, end the podcast with some spice. Uh, because Joel, that's pretty much what, what I got. got. Yeah. Um, if you don't have anything else, sirs, go ahead and uh, close this down. Absolutely, ladies, gentlemen, folks. Good to have you with us. We hope you stay connected. Make sure you subscribe to our show: iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify. Of course, our video version on our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Make sure you go and follow us. Follow us on our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also Twitch. Uh, we also invite you to send any emails, questions, comments, feedback. Send an email to noloadtime at gmail.com. That's noloadtime at gmail.com. Thank you all very much, and we hope to have some more big and great stuff coming out this year. We're glad to be back. Stay with us, and we'll see you on our next episode. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next time.